New Vision Christian Center. our speaker today. Amen. I'm extremely proud of him. He's the, his stepfather is my son, Elder Ephraim. And his mother is my daughter-in-law, Minister Michelle Ephraim. He has two associate degrees in Pharmacy. He's a pharmacy technician and a medical assistant. And uh, he has served under me as a deacon. He was on the Sunshine Band. i just tell you how long he's been here. He used to be the church drummer. He worked with the sound team, technician. He sang in the choir. He done swept the floor. He had done everything I ever asked him to do without question. And uh, I'm extremely happy to introduce him. Amen. He got saved when his mother was preaching. Hallelujah. The mother, the, 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 the message she was preaching was coming out of Lodibar. Lodibar. Amen. When she preached that coming out message, he got saved. Amen. That's been about four or five years ago. I'm, I'm encouraged seeing you all here today. Look at somebody say, Superintendent Ephraim. Say, Superintendent Ephraim is trying to establish a holiness church. Now, holiness church is not a denomination, it's a way of life. And ever since I announced that, I ain't had nothing but hell. Trouble. Because yeah. the devil does not want That's right. a holiness church. That's right. Because a holiness church teaches you and will carry you to, to your right true salvation. Yes, you can get saved if you try to live holy. Yes. Some, somebody say, if you try to do it. God counts it to you as doing it. That's right. But if don't nobody ever try to do it, it won't never get done. So we need excellence. We need to we need to make our minds up. I might be doing something, but I'm gonna work on it. That will bring me into alignment, alignment with what God wants. Yes, sir. That's where I'm at. Amen. Amen. This preacher today, I saw many years ago that he had the gift on his life even before he ever even began to declare anything. Over progressive. Amen. He had the gift on him. And now God is bringing it to pass. I want you all to rest on your feet. He's married to Sister Candice. I can't never remember her last name, but that's Elder Hastings' granddaughter. Huh? You know, I know it's sales, but I'm talking about what your name was before. Amen. Her mother was a girl in my church, served. Now she's here serving. She is the wife of this to be great preacher as time goes on. His name is Joshua Sales. He's about six feet four or five of energy. Good looking, long and lanky. Yes, Lord. 
family man. Y'all ain't paying me no attention. Come on, man. He's a family man. He got three children. I knew both of them before they had any children. I know him. God is raising up a church that ain't never been on drugs. God is raising up a ministry that ain't never been in jail. He's raising up a ministry that ain't never been married but once. You all ain't listening to me. God is working on it. And he's using old thugs like me that know better to help them get there. I guard him. I guard them. He's, he's your guardian. If you listen to Elder Ephraim, he can tell you what not to do. Because he's been there and done that. And no matter how much trouble you've been in, if you turn to Christ, you have something to offer that these weak folk that ain't never done nothing don't even know. Sister Lewis, you're a very powerful person because you know what it takes. Look how you dressed. Yes, yes. Look at Barbara. Beautiful. Look how she's dressed. She's beautiful even with short hair. Beautiful. She's always beautiful. Look beautiful. at her mother. Beautiful. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Don't you know God is working on something? Yeah. Yes, he is. He ain't just sitting around waiting. Yes, Deacon is acting up. God is working on something. Yeah. And he's talking to my mind. Hallelujah. Saying his holiness oh, hell. or hell. hell. Yes, right, my daughter Cynthia is here. She's a beautiful girl. Yeah. She's got a gift. But you gotta let God have you all the way for your gift to operate. That's right. Somebody say amen. amen. I'm having to introduce Minister Sales today because I help raise him from the little bitty guy to where he is now. He's in your hands now, God. Take over and bless him as he comes. In Jesus' name, receive this preacher by the saying of amen. amen. Raising of your right hand. Lord God, I'm going to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory, for you are the author and finisher of our faith. You are our bedrock, our sure foundation, God. And just for that alone, we give you the praise. And for that alone, we say thank you. Lord God, heaven, we thank you for being there when no one else was. God, we say thank you. For giving us the strength to press on. God, we give you thanks, God. Over the next few moments, Lord God, I'm going to note these lips. I pray, Lord God, that you touch the minds of your people. Give them eyes to see, ears to hear, a mind to understand, and a heart to receive. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. You may be seated. Now I'm going to start this off different way. I'm going to go old school today. I give God the honor and the glory. I'm saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. And no evil have I done. Now some of not, some, some, some old folks will understand that saying. Because you don't know what it means to just go throughout the whole entire day and not commit not one evil. To be able to actually say that is a tremendous thing. But Throughout the course of this service, all I kept hearing was throughout the praise dancing and the, the praise and worship and the testimonies and words of encouragement. The only thing I kept hearing in my mind is, let God handle it. That's all I kept hearing. Let God handle it. Get your hands off. Let God handle it. Let go of the stress. Let God handle it. You're going through some problems. Let God handle it. Worry about the people that's in your circle. Let God handle it. That's all I kept hearing. Even with the the accolades that Pastor was <laughs> was saying, 
Only I kept saying was, God, you did that. I couldn't do that. I wasn't in the mind space to get an education. I didn't care about education. Only thing I cared about was hitting these streets, stealing, breaking to homes, stealing from stores, carrying a gun, running with the wrong crowd. But God. But God. Hey. If you haven't been in trouble, that statement does not mean anything to you. But if you've been in trouble, now I'm at home. Let's, 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 let's describe trouble. I'm talking about when the ATF starts knocking on your door. I'm talking about when the sheriff department, police department, SWAT team is tapping your home. Your phone calls are being tapped. You're followed every single where you go. Police department from the Whitefield Police Department is pulling you over every single minute as they can. Looking for something to put on you. Trouble. But God. You'll catch that soon. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Again, I thank God for the, for being the head of my life. I thank my pastor for allowing me to preach and for giving me this opportunity. And I give praise to the to the pulpit, Minister Babies, my father, uh, uh, Elder Jesse Ephraim, Elder Butler, Minister Ford, my mama. Minister Missionary Michelle Ephraim and my aunt, my other mama, Mama Campbell. I call Mama Campbell. Yeah. And Mama Blackwell. And District Missionary. Yeah, Bob. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me stay off of that. Lord have mercy. But none and not least, I have to give thanks to my real. And All no one right else now. does it, I will. All right now. Been, through, through, been with me through thick and thin. All right. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. My wife, Candace yes. Sales. Yes. Give her a hand, please. <laughs> Over these next few minutes, we're going to be coming from the book of Daniel. Come on, sir. The yes. book of Daniel. Say a word. Chapter 3. Verse 23. I'll wait. Daniel 3.23. And we're also going to use verses 1 through 5 in the same chapter. When you have it, say amen. And again, like I said, I'm old school, so I like to stand when the reading of the word is being, is being done. So if you're able to stand, please stand. We're just going to read verse 23, and that's it. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. That's it. You may all right, it. all right. Come on, say a word. That's enough right there. Yeah. A title, no, the title that God gave me is God Met Me in the Fire. That's the title of this sermon. Now, I'm not going to lie to you, I was not prepared to preach because I was going through my own issues. I had my own problems I've been dealing with for the past two weeks. That when Pastor told me that I was going to preach, be honest now, I did not want to preach at all. I'm like, my mind is nowhere near preaching, Pastor. I understand. My mind, my, my mind, my heart is nowhere near doing this. I come to church, but preaching is not one of them. Not because I don't want to preach. I like to be in the right head space to preach the word of God. Yes, sir. But God had other plans. That you're going to preach whether you like it or not. That's right. I don't care if you're in the mood to do it. Get in the mood. And Pastor actually told me something that actually makes a lot of sense. If you're going through something, especially if you're a preacher, you preach it. through it. Preach your way out. Preach your way out. Yes, sir. Preaching can bring you out of your toughest problem. Yes, sir. And if you're not a preacher, praise. Bring you out. Praise will bring you out. Yes, sir. Your worship will bring you out. Yes, 
Yes, Even when you don't feel like doing it, when you feel like, I don't feel like praising God, praise God anyway. Anyhow. If you don't feel like worshiping, do it anyways. That's it. Obedience is better than sacrifice. And you have no idea what will come out of your praise. Especially when you don't feel like doing it. That's right. All right. How much trouble has your tongue got you into? I'm going to be in somebody's business today, so I'm going to take some time with this one. I'll say it again. How much trouble has your tongue got you into? Your tongue is one of the most dangerous weapons we have at our disposal. It is a carnal double-edged sword. On one hand, it can start wars, cut deeper than any weapon, ruin relationships, and set chaos into motion. Now, some of you, I'm not going to point fingers, some of you can use your tongue so well that you have to remind yourself, let me be quiet before I say something that I won't regret. That you won't Regret, yeah. completely ignoring the consequences and events of what your tongue was set into motion. And there are many sayings about guarding your tongue. And with these sayings, I'm going to say a few. First one, a person's tongue can give you a taste of his heart. Yeah. Let a person talk to you for a little bit. Right. They will tell you exactly how they feel about you. That's a sermon, that's it. Come on. You may think you're all good in a situation, a relationship, whatever it is. Let something happen. The heart will always speak its truth. Loose lips sink ships. Or a person who just can't hold water. You just can't tell them anything because you're not sure if you're telling it to them. And who else they're going to tell it to? The tongue is but a soft, small, soft flesh. Yet it is capable of breaking the strongest bonds and destroying the most powerful of relationships. Speak, sir. Loose tongues are worse than wicked hands. And lastly, a tongue without a mind is an ignorant thing. James 3, 6 through 8 says, The tongue is a fire, a world in iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature. And it is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beast and of birds and serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and have been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Well, I'm trying to say you need to be careful about what you say. That's even when you're speaking to yourself. The Bible also says life and death are in the power of the tongue. And just as easily the tongue can destroy. It can also rebuild. It can speak life into situations that are seemingly dead. It can give strength to a person who is weakened. And if you just add just a little bit of faith. Just a little bit. You can move mountains. In the book. Let's get to the word. In the book. Daniel 3 and 1. King Nebuchadnezzar. Am I saying that right? Yeah. Okay. King Nebuchadnezzar yes. has made a golden image okay. that sets into motion a command or ritual that whenever you hear the music play at a certain hour, a certain hour. wherever you are, Stop. you must worship the image that, catch this, he made. Now, before I continue on to that, let's backtrack. Let's backtrack a bit. This is the same king that had Daniel interpret his dream. Uh -huh. 
and by his own tongue praised Daniel for interpreting the dream and blessed the name of the Lord as well. Okay. Notice how you can do one thing. But now. But now. Okay. <laughs> now we have Nebuchadnezzar using the same tongue All right. that blessed the name of God yes, sir. to command Babylon to worship a golden image of his own making. All right. Now, if you pay attention to verses 2 through 7, these verses end with the same statement. The image that Nebuchadnezzar has set up. And I find this interesting that no matter how much takes place in these verses, it always brings you back to why these things are taking place in the first place. Likewise, how a loose or unguarded tongue can set into motion events that, like a fire, can spread and cause so much damage. You can't see where it started, and you can't see where it ends. And just like we have our own fire investigators who can tell you after investigating the damage, the path and method of destruction, exactly where and who the fire originated from, we have a God okay. who knows the beginning and ending of all things. All right. yes. But getting back to the scripture, not only did Nebuchadnezzar create a golden image and ritual to worship the image 15 years after he was shown the wonders of God, and calling God the revealer of secrets. He built this image. 15 years. He's, he did his 18th year of reign right now. Mm. He's been reigning for 18 years. So 15 years after God has revealed the dream to him. Okay. He builds this golden image. Mm. 15 years after God tells Daniel. This is what the dream is. And this is what I'm going to do. 15 years later. He decides to create his own image. And he calls God the revealer of secrets. He was set into motion a moment for God to answer a question that he will later ask Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego before throwing them into the fiery furnace. If you want to know where that is, that's in verse 15. And the question was, and who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Who is that? Remember those sayings. Remember that question later on in the sermon. Okay. And before we go further, let's just let's talk about Meshach. Let's just talk about the three Hebrew brothers for, for a minute. Before we go further, these three Hebrew men weren't just anybody. There weren't just three Hebrew boys who just happened to be picked to be thrown into the furnace. These three Hebrew men in the city of Babylon were put in charge of affairs of the province of Babylon by the king himself. Daniel gave the request after the interpretation of the dream, but the king himself had to give the approval. These three Hebrew men in a city that is known for idol worship and other kinds of idolatry stood before a king that knew if they came from Daniel, mm -hmm. then they would have to serve the same God Daniel does. On, I want you to witness the setup here. Okay. Come on now. So I say that again. If, they, if Daniel is the one who brought them to me, uh -huh. and I know the God that Daniel serves, All right. All right. he declared it to me. Yes, All right. So if he brought these men to me, right. and they're Hebrew, they have to serve the same God that Daniel does. These three Hebrew men now stand in a situation not of their own making. Now stand to take the judgment from the one who started the situation in the first place. Let's pause. Have you ever been in a situation where you're trying to figure out why am I in here? Have you ever been in a situation where someone else creates the problem? But you're the one taking the blame. Come on, come on, come on. Have you 
Have you ever been in a situation where you're trying to figure out, I don't even know where this situation even started from. I don't know who's even involved. How did my name get mixed into this? And now I have people judging me and try to make me take the fall for a problem that someone else created. No, oh, I got nobody in this thing. Okay. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Now, it's what they say next that proves the power of your tongues. Instead of pleading for mercy or asking the king to reconsider or even agreeing to the king's demand without wasting any time, they unapologetically declared where they stand. If you don't believe me, they said, they said, King, I am not careful to answer your question. Basically, I'm not going to waste your breath. I'm not even going to waste your time. Your answer is no. I stand with God. For God I live and for God I die. I am not worshiping what you want me to worship. So, I, for this is for you, people of God. It's time to stop being so apologetic. It's time to stop being so apologetic for what we stand on. If the enemy or people can boldly lie to your face and bring trouble to you, if they can boldly judge you in your face, we need to boldly, boldly and unapologetically rebuke and stand. People have no problem making you the bad guy. People have no problem saying that it's your fault. When you didn't do anything, they have no problem stating your faults. Especially when you say, I can't do that. God told me I can't do this. Have you ever been in a situation where you told people, I can't go to this place because this place is not for me? Hanging out with those people are not for me. Especially when God says, I don't want you here. I don't want you talking to this person. I don't want you going to this certain place. And then they get mad at you because they don't want, because you're not doing what they want you to do. You're not going to the places that they want you to go to. And then they say, oh, you're just so self-righteous. Oh, you're just so holier than thou. And then you want to, well, I'm sorry, I just can't, no. No. No more apologies. It is what it is. No more apologies. I'm not going there no more. My friendship with you is not more important than my relationship with God. No more apologies. And boldly claim, I am a child of a God. I'm not charging that for nobody. This is okay. This, let's get this going. Let's keep going. Y'all ain't hearing it. Yes. Come on, come on. And if your circle gets smaller, just because you proclaim the word of God, so be it. So be it. If you're the odd one at work, so be it. God will provide. Yes, He will. And Pastor, I'm going to use your word for real quick. If you're the only missionary that misses, so be it. If you're the only deacon that deeks, so be it. If you're the only preacher that preaches, so be it. Yeah. If you're the only usher who ushers, so be it. Yeah. If you're the only praiser who praises, so, so be it. Yeah. If you're the only worshiper who worships, so be it. On, if you're the only one in your house that stands on the word of God, yeah. so be it. Yeah. If you're the only one in those friends that touches and blesses the name of God, so be it. Yeah. If you have to go through this walk by yourself, so be it. If you can't take your husband with you, so be it. If you can't take your wife with you, so be it. So be it. I don't care you have to preach to two or three people. So be it. I don't care the pages for one person. So be it. I don't care to drive in the car by yourself because no one else says I can't be in the car with you. Walk in. So be it. I don't care if your customers, if you have a business, don't want to be in your business. So be it. God will provide. I don't care who it is. Who?
so be it. God didn't save you for clicks and high fives.
In verse 19, it says the king was so full of rage that the form of his visage changed. Now, if you ever want to see a per who a person truly is, don't do what they want you to do. Especially if it goes against your relationship with God or your spiritual growth. Make up in your heart that you want more of God and watch God start to reveal the people who are around you. Pause that again. We got to get, we got to stop wanting to just be with God on a certain level. I hear a saying all the time, God want more of you. How you want more of God? But you don't want to sit here and let go of the people that's around you. But the moment you declare unto God, I need change. I need more than this. And when you mean it, watch the people who are around you. And they start to go a certain way. Even the place that you used to go to, or that you currently go to, it will start to change on you. Make up in your heart that you want more of God and watch God start to reveal the people who are around you. Reveal the places you frequent, which was once good in your eyes. God will reveal this very thing is trying to put you in the furnace. Now the king, the king, the king is in the particular situation. Not only was he the king, not only was he the king denied, but he also has to put into the furnace the same three men that Daniel requested of him to put into high places. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In other words, it's time for the king to own up to what he said. No one caught that. Come on. He had he made a declaration. If you don't praise the oh, the idol that I have made, you get put in the same hour into the fiery furnace. The very three men that Daniel said put them in high places. Now he has to throw them into the furnace. It's time to own up to what you just said, there, King. Come on, come on. Put up or shut up. It's time to put up or shut up. It's a terrible thing. To set into motion by your own tongue a destructive chain of events that will eventually return back to the source. All right. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now the men are thrown to the furnace, and this is where I want to focus on. I did all of that just to get to here. Now the men are, show, are thrown into the furnace, and this is where I want to focus on. Have you ever been persecuted for God's sake? Yes, sir. Or for what you stand for? Thrown into the very fire of turmoil by the very people who know where you stand. Yeah. Now we have a perplexed king right. staring at what he thought was the end of you. Let's uh -huh. make this personal. Uh -huh. Now we have a perplexed king staring at what he uh -huh. thought was the end of you. Now you got your enemy staring at what was the end of you. Perplexed and confused. <laughs> And questioning himself. I set this situation up. I set this up. I told these men. Who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Okay. Who is it? I said this in front of everybody. I said this in front of everyone. I threw this missionary in the fire. I threw everyone in this building in the fire. You should not survive. I expected them to give up. Okay. I expected them to be like Peter and deny, deny, and deny. Come on. I expected them to say, you know what, God, I don't want to do this no more. Okay. I expected them to say, I'm not praising God no more. I expected them to say, I'm not praying the instrument no more. I expected them to say, I'm not doing the little angels no more. I expected them to say, I'm not preaching no more. I expect him to say, I'm not doing anything. I'm not praising God anymore. I expect them to give up. Throw in the towel. I expect them to just sit down and not praise the name of God. I expected them to not give God the praise and worship. I expected, but wait, how are they still standing? Why aren't they dead yet? Why aren't you dead yet? Why aren't 
aren't you there yet? Why haven't you given up yet? Why haven't you quit yet? Why are you walking around? Why are you not bound and tethered? Why are you not chained? Why isn't your head let down? Why aren't you laying down? Why aren't you giving up? Why? Who met them in the fire? I put you in there by yourself. Who's the other person with you? Let me ask somebody. Didn't I put them in there by themselves? Who's the fourth man? Where did he come from? I only put three people in there. Who is the fourth man? Who is the man that problems with you? Who is the man that's in hell with you? Who is the one that's crying with you? Who is the fourth man? Who is the one that stood with you? Who was the one that gave you your message? Who was the one that pressed your way? Who was the one that was in this by yourself? Who was the guy with you? I need some answers now. You was by yourself. Who is the guy next to you? You were supposed to give up already. Who is the man next to you? Where did he come from? He looks like the son of God to me. But where did he come from? The door is locked. It's shut. There's no way no one else can get in. Where did he come from? When they lied on you and tried to tarnish your character, who met you in the fire? When they tried to say you're not good enough as a mother, not good enough as a wife, not good enough as a sister. Not good enough as a brother. Not good enough as a husband. Not good enough as a deacon. Not good enough as a deaconess. Not good enough as a missionary. Not good enough as a preacher. Not good enough as a real. Not good enough as a friend. Not good enough as a grandmother. Not good enough as a person. Not good enough. And not only that, you're not even anointed enough. You don't praise enough. You don't worship enough. You don't love God enough. You don't treat God with respect. They treat you like you're nothing. Broken and disgusting. But who met you in the fight? No, this is a QA. I'm going to give you the question, you give me the answer. Who was the one that met you in the fire? Let's try it again. Who was the one that met you in the fire? Who was the one with you in the midnight hour? Who was the one that met you in the car? When a man was beating you, who was the one that comforted you? When a woman left you, who was the one that comforted you? When you tried to kill yourself, who was the one that said, I'm going to save you? When you tried to use a gun yourself, who was the one that stopped the bullet? When the enemy tried to surpass you, tried to take over you, who's the one that said not so? Who's the one that saved you? Who's the one that redeemed you? Who's the one that revived you? Who's the one that said? Who was the one? When you needed someone the most, and the one you counted on to show up and defend you, but they didn't do it, who's the one that met you in the fire? We need to apologetically, unapologetically, declare who and what we stand on. Next time when the enemy comes to you, and they will, when the enemy try to align on you, and they will, when the enemy try to destroy you, and they will, remind the enemy who was the one that stood in the fire with you. Remind the enemy. Who's the one that for God I live, for God I die, let's finish it off with the Holy Ghost. Who was the one that anointed your feet and your head with oil? Who was the one to put dancing in your feet? Who was the one to put bread on your table? Who was the one that anoint your head with the Holy Ghost? Who was the one that's the Friday morning star? Who is the one? Who was the one that put clapping in your hands? 
dance in your feet? Who was the one to put joy in your soul? Who is the one to brought tears to your eyes? Who is the one to brought strength to your body? Who was the one that woke you up this morning? Who was the one that kept peace all around you? Who was the one that sent grace and mercy around you? Who is the one? Y'all forgot something. Y'all forgot the God that you serve. Let someone be in some deeper trouble. Let someone who pleads for God for help. Let someone be in a hospital room. And I bet you money. Every money of five dollars that I have. That you will call on the name of God at your deepest time of trouble. But when everything is going good and well, we don't call on the whisper of God. So let me remind you, with the trouble that you're facing, who's facing trouble right now? Don't get my hand up right now. Who's facing trouble? Now who's the ones gonna bring you out? Who's the ones that make a way out of no way? Who's the ones that make you the victory? Who's the ones that make the enemy the footstool? Who's the one that called the enemy to pay you back? Who's the one that tell the devil to give it back to you? Who's the one to give you a hundred bucks?